All right, good afternoon. As many of you know, moving water isn't easy. The Romans used aqueducts, and today we're going to find out what the boron poles use at the Woven Strong Farm. Uh, good afternoon, my name is Greg Padgett. I am the Next Generation Director for Practical Farmers of Iowa, and accompanying me behind the scenes is providing technical support is Megan Filbert, our Livestock Manager. Uh, well, shortly, we're going to broadcast live with Bill Born Pohl from their farm at Wol uh, Woven Strong, Strong Farm in Lamont, Iowa, where he's going to show us how they set up their watering system for their pasture rotations. But first, I wanted to tell you a little bit about our sponsors. We, our field day season would not be possible without the support of these great sponsors that help make what we do possible. And guess what? It makes it free for you, free of charge to watch. Uh, today, one of our sponsors is Premier One Supplies. At Premier One, they've been providing electric fencing, electric netting, goat and sheep supplies, clippers and shears, egg, egg <laughs> ear tags, poultry products, and expert advice for over 40 years. Uh, so they have some really exciting products. Here at Practical Farmers of Iowa, we are equipping farmers to build resilient farms and communities. Uh, we're a nonprofit that's based out of Ames, Iowa, and we specialize in farmer to farmer knowledge sharing and farmer led research. Um, we are welcoming of everyone at PFI and we invite you to learn more about our organization and access the vast collection of resources, including the archives of our uh, past virtual field days at practicalfarmers.org. A little bit about what's going to happen today. This is a virtual field day. We're going to run until about 2.30 today. Uh, if you have any questions for Bill during the field day, please just type them in the comment box and I'll do my best to work with Bill to put those into our discussion. And at the conclusion of the event, uh, we'd love to hear, hear your feedback. This, the virtual field day is, is a new process for us, so we'd love to hear how it's going for you. Um, so we'll share a link for an evaluation form. So now let's go live with Bill and he's gonna be our host today. So I will let him take it away. Hello and thank you everyone for joining this afternoon. Um, on behalf of Woven Strong Farm, my wife and I, Stacey Bornpool, uh, invite you to this uh, PFI event. Hope it's beneficial to you. Thank you for taking some time out of your day. And uh, just at the beginning of an intro here, uh, we're gonna have a video in a few minutes. Um, but what I want to do is to show you, first of all, a layout of our farm. This will help with, in terms of video, when I was speaking in the video. Uh, so that way you'll know that when I start the video, uh, this is our farm place right here. And then it's off the Centerville Road here in Jackson County. Um, I'm, I'm stay, talking right here. And then we're going to walk down to a, a point that's about 400 feet uh, down the way. Um, well, uh, yeah, about, about 400 feet down the way. And then I'm going to reference the road and then a long run of a line where we run our different watering spouts. So uh, that is kind of an intro into our farm and help you get some context from the video of the watering system that we put in here at, at, on our farm. And so with that, why don't we go ahead and jump into the video, Greg, if that's all right with you. Sounds great. Megan will cue that up for us. My wife, Stacy. We own Woven Strong Farm and we really appreciate you uh, tuning in today, taking a half hour out of your time uh, to uh, let us talk to you about watering systems. And uh, so, uh, like I said, we've been at this for a couple of years here. I um, hope that what I can share with you today uh, be some tips and tricks on how, why we put a watering system in, um, how we operate it, you know, what the parts are, and then um, things, we've, things we've learned along the way. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Like I said, my name is Bill. We have Woven Strong Farm here in Jackson County, Iowa. Uh, we are near the town of Lamont, about 13 miles uh, from, the, uh, from the Mississippi River. And uh, we're in a very bluffy limestone type area of the world here in Jackson County. Um, really good grazing ground. Uh, and so we utilize that type of grazing as where a water system can be very beneficial for us. Um, like I said, we're here on a farm, we raise pork, beef, and goats uh, for our uh, beef. We rotation graze the, the steers and finish them out for a direct marketing in the fall time and spring. And then uh, our, our mama cows, uh, that's where our, we get our, our stock from. Uh, they will run uh, the field, the farm around us. Um, we actually, 
uh, have the ho the homestead out of a 180 farm, 180 acre farm. Uh, you know how this thing happened over time. We were able to uh, pick up this piece, and uh, and so uh, we work with a farmer that runs the ground around us. So my mama cows will graze a lot of the headlands and ravines and waterways and that type of thing helps. And he doesn't have to mow then the field uh, through the summertime. So it's a win-win in that regard. Um, but we do a lot of traveling, or you know, there's a lot of distance sometimes to move here, which is where a watering system can be helpful. Uh, the goats are really helpful also, uh, you know, just because we have a lot of uh, multi-four rows, honeysuckle, uh, you know, just the normal stuff that you get when you get a lot of, a lot of uh, ravines and crab and, 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 and um, um, craigs and stuff like that, you know, so uh, they work well and they're a good complement to the, the grazing system. Cattle like the grass, uh, goats prefer the thorns and the thistles and that type of thing. Um, our hogs are uh, non-confinement. Uh, we have a, a, an area for them to run around in, um, and so they're open. Uh, they're not pasture raised, but I would say it's just more of an open lot for them. Um, and, uh, you know, we have a prescription we follow for each of those uh, species for how we market that uh, beef and, and how we market that meat. Meat. So with that, uh, you know, we bought this place in 2011, uh, moved here in 2012. When we moved here, uh, you know, luckily we had a barn that was really nice. It's a barn that's built in the 70s, basically, um, had been used for a few years, um, but it was, it's got good, it's got good DNA to it. We had a shop here, an older shop built in the 60s, and our house, which was built in 44, and we since added on to it. Uh, we have a family, uh, kids, and so the house wasn't quite big enough for all that. Um, you know, you know, so the farm here had good infrastructure, has a deep well, 250 foot well. Um, and we have a good power supply. Uh, we don't lose our power very often, uh, which is a blessing. And then, uh, but the fencing was pretty rough, you know. So we basically took out all the fencing we had. Uh, you know, we're trying to rotation and graze, so you got to figure out how you're going to set stuff up and what type of packs, how big packs need to be, how many cows you're going to have. Uh, you know, so a lot of learning there to happen. And you know, so for several years when we began in 2012. Um, that's what we did is a lot, of, a lot of learning in that regard. Now, when we did that, you know, water was always one of those things that you, you knew you could do better at, but it was an easy just to go to Tyson's, get the 100 foot roll, a farm and ranch hose that's good, it's durable stuff, I still use it, um, you know, it, it doesn't wear out on me. Um, but, you know, you're doing a lot of, um, you're doing a lot of uh, moving around of, of vats and stuff like that because, you know, our paddocks would move. And, you know, I think we've all been there where, you know, sometimes you might graze a paddock uh, one or two days too long because, you know, just with life and trying to get stuff moved you didn't get to move that water so you didn't move the paddock or you back raised a little longer than you really wanted to and, and so you know water sometimes was holding us back from doing a good job now i don't want to blame water entirely i won't i won't do that but i'll just say that you know, those are you know there's things that you can get in the way of getting things done and so moving water lines all the time and then of course you know if you get a if you get a, um, a vat sitting there uh the cattle really mounts that area and then the weeds will take off that area and that's prime grazing ground that was always a real bother to me is that where we have our waters it's great great grazing ground you know so that's one of the things I wanted to try to change was have water locations that were more uh, in spots where it just where there's not else really happening there, and it was a good watering spot. We've been able to find we've been able to find them and and utilize them. So you know we what we did is we talked to um, Lori Schnorr, uh, NRCS here in Jackson County. We worked with them quite a bit already. Um, and so we worked with the CSP program, uh, you know, a couple other things. And so doing a water system them uh, from a caution perspective was a very easy thing to take up with them. Uh, Lori came out here to the farm. And so basically what we have is, you know, we showed her that we have, you know, here's our one main steer paddock right here. Um, along the way, um, you can see some corn back in the background. That's where the mamas are right now. We got a paddock and there's, a, uh, there's another paddock uh, behind that uh, tree line. We got some paddocks to the east. And so, you know, we knew where we needed to get water, and particularly with the mama cows being uh, over, over this farm, you know, we want to um, keep the distances down for what they have to walk and, and have a water just to give us some flexibility. So we devised a plan to where my well, which is near the road, um, and it's uh, back over this uh, barn and down the way a little bit, but to the road here. Uh, you know, the well, uh, it's a good height. Uh, all my watering points are below my well. I'm starting to pump any water uphill more than I do already, uh, you know, just to get to my barn, get to my house. Uh, and then, and so I can run really long distances because uh, everything's pretty well downhill from here. And that's a, that's a pretty important thing you got to think about. Uh, I run straight east on one line, probably about a thousand feet. I do have a T off of that line. And that line comes up and comes up to an oak tree that's back over here. I got a watering point there for some paddocks. Um, on that line that goes about a thousand feet, I'll actually couple another 600 uh, feet of uh, garden hose on that. And actually I take that pretty far. Uh, that's the farthest east we go when we do our, our grazing for our mamas out that way. Uh, 
but you know we, we get plenty of water out there I got a big vat that way uh, you know I, I got a big uh, big tub uh, that, I, that water that way when the cattle get there you know they're all gonna be thirsty they can all get around that tub at one point in time um, I do have two sizes of tubs uh, one's like a 60 70 gallon and then this big rubber made which is a uh, that's a that's a 300 gallon tank right there that tank I use uh, when I go farther away because like I said my, uh, the cattle get there they're all thirsty I don't want them fighting because um, they always catch the water line they'll pull it out or something like that happens you know so you don't ever want to do that so I have two different size tubs regard uh, and and uh, we'll size um, we'll put them accordingly um, let me see where is that so you know so we worked with Lori and basically uh, what we did is we put a we had put a watering point down over here um, and that watering point can cover three different paddocks or three different pastures for me and I had and this run is about um, about 400 feet and we're gonna take a walk down here in a little bit so we're, we got that run uh, so I got to run over here that's off that T and so I actually have about three uh, main uh, water points where I can pick water off and I only use two of them at a time uh, just the way I'm set up if I uh, needed to I could easily just make up another attachment and then use a third setup if I needed to but you can see here um, that right here um, you know I'm gonna sit down here's my my black pipe we bought um, 400 feet of this black pipe as, as part of this the initial part of it and uh, you know, I, I put a piece of insulation over just to keep it protected from the water, from the electric fence here, and also the barb. Uh, you know, you always got to be careful about something scratching that. Um, and it, you know, it kind of sits down in the in the in the pasture and runs itself. It buries itself in the pasture fairly nicely. Um, I will let it be there uh, all year. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take a walk down here. Um, I, I will drain them in the winter time. I've done that several years now. And in fact, last year um, I had a little bit of a low point, and uh, water did freeze in it. But it didn't hurt the pipe at all. I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, but I've been, I, I've had some good luck with having this water line run in the pasture here. Um, you know, we, when we first bought, when we first brought the water system in, we tried more of a uh, wagon wheel spoke type um, pad up setup. So I actually, uh, about halfway through the pack here, cut the line. Uh, that didn't work out too well for us so i put a coupling in there um, i try to use all very good equipment uh, brass fittings plastic over time just doesn't last so i'll use all of my brass fittings um, i know where my couplings are at you know so I'll, once a year i'll go and take a walk and like when i was drilling in this pasture here um you know i could tell that it was dripping a little bit so i had to i always carry a sock with me in the tractor and i can just tighten that fitting up and uh, the, those hose clamps up and it'll be just fine um, I don't drain them like I was saying. Um, I, I do have a leak on another, uh, just a small leak. And with this heat that we have, um, it's actually kind of nice. It acts as a relief valve uh, because, you know, it can heat up. So, but I do not use any relief valves. Uh, I don't know. Um, I'm an engineer by training. So I, I do want to make sure that I don't have any, that my, my systems are safe. Um, but I use that leak as a small little relief valve. It doesn't hurt anything at all. Um, so, you know, but that's just part of the tips and tricks of how we, uh, how, how we set this up. You know, the reasons why we did this is because uh, we have long distances and, uh, you, know, you know, it's getting a uh, struggle to move all of the, uh, the, little, uh, the garden hose and the vats and stuff like that. So here's where my, here's my one, uh, this is one area here. As you can tell here, I've got a, there's a, um, there's a, a electric fence that cuts the, over the top of it. That's because the cows get that side and when the steers are in this paddock and they'll be in this pasture here in a week, um, they, they can have the other half. Uh, the electric fence keeps them apart. Uh, I really don't, I sometimes may have to run a second line on the bottom just if I got one steer that's a little naughty. Uh, but this really does nice for separating the two. I have a, then what I can do is I can put a Y in the fitting here and I can run a line down and what, and do a water in over in that paddock whenever I need to also, which that works out. Um, you know, from a setup perspective here, um, you can tell that there's a float right here. And I'm going to have all these parts in, in on a live here uh, when we when we get that far. But I do put a rock in the tub. Uh, helps to hold things down. I have found a rock will pinch the line, um, and I would never have thought that. So when you find a rock, and we've got a lot of it here in Jackson County, uh, make sure that you don't pick the high point and put that on to the hose. Uh, kind of make sure there's a little flat spot there um, because a rock will pinch it off. Um, I tend to use a little whip, about a two foot long whip that I attach to the um, to the fitting uh, or to the, the valve. And um, you know, that, that way then that whip connects me then to the garden hose. And uh, I'll show you that too. Um, you know, from like I say, from a standpoint of quality, what I try to do is I try to buy uh, high quality stuff. Uh, you know, at, at Lowe's uh, or at Menards, I'll have an area where you can get your plumbing and you can buy uh, high quality brass fittings. Uh, I 
don't really recommend buying um, you know the normal garden hose type stuff out of Tyson's let's say um, or a, a farm store like that um, that that stuff will wear out I give it one season and then you're done it'll it'll spin off on you it'll wear out um, it just is not worth it you know make sure the fittings you buy are very so, uh, good and solid brass you know if I spend three dollars for a fitting that that tells me I'm buying good quality hopefully so three or four dollars a fitting is, is quite all right um, I use all my couplings are brass um, I use a um, and then like on my hose ends I'll show you here um, I've evolved on how I use hose ends I have predominantly just used now uh, zip um, you know hose clamps for hose ends um, the other types of hose ends you can buy for garden hoses they don't really last very well um, they're not they're just not farm quality and um, you know, and, and then I, I still use them because if they're on my product, that means they've been living for a while, but I don't like consistently using them. So and I then like, I don't buy some of those parts anymore for my Tysons. Um, you think I don't like Tysons. I spend a lot of money on Tysons. I, uh, just that you want to make sure you buy good quality stuff. Uh, so, you know, this is a setup here I have. Um, I try to utilize the watering point for a little fly control um, for my cattle. Still looking for that secret sauce. Um, but uh, what we're going to do here now is we're going to go back to the live session. So thanks for uh, watching this here. I hope it was uh, informational. I uh, hope I had maybe generated some good questions. And then we're going to go for our live session here back up at the house. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, so I hope that video was helpful. Um, you know, we made um, this video on our farm here, and I'm going to go ahead and walk you through um, some of the parts that I, that I use. I know in the video I talked about the pieces I use. So what I have here is I have laid out. And so on this table, um, this middle row is the parts that I generally use today. And the top row is the parts that I had bought initially and would uh, tell you where the things failed on me. And so, therefore, um, I just have them as extras for some for extra supplies. So let's go ahead and get into um, this. But I think the first thing to think about is when you're doing a water system, one of the biggest things to think about is the standards. What, what are your standards? And what I mean by that is, are you using three-quarter inch garden hose or are you using five-eighths? Uh, pick something and move forward. You know, are you using three-quarter inch pipe? Are you using half-inch pipe? Whatever it is, pick something and move forward. Don't try to deviate in and out uh, because, of course, you're never always, always going to be at the farm store. You're always going to get the wrong thing. Uh, it's hard to get parts right because uh, someone else might be picking up for you and just errors occur. Um, I can attest to that because I have a few parts that I should not have bought. So pick a standard. I use three-quarter inch uh, pipe, which is a, na a national pipe thread, and then I use a three-quarter inch garden hose. So everything I use is, is of that regard right now. So when you get into your parts, of course, you got your gasket here. That's going to be that, that's gonna be common. But when I talk about a, a good quality brass part, um, I have a three-quarter inch MHT to three-quarter inch ID. MHT and SHT are really your garden hose standards. MHT is male uh, hose thread, and then um, the SHT is female hose thread. So, uh, you know, just a, a three-quarter inch here, uh, barb fitting, and then this would be your garden hose, which is your three-quarter inch MHT. Then when you get to a uh, the three-quarter inch F uh, FHT, uh, to three-quarter inch ID, this is your barb here that goes onto your black pipe, uh, which uh, I have in the back here. I'll show you in just a second. And then this is really a good quality fitting right here. This is a fitting that you might find somewhere else. Um, they do work, um, but I would recommend this fitting because it doesn't come apart. It's got a nice O-ring in there. It's very solidly machined. Uh, this one here kind of comes apart. This is kind of hard to actually get onto your hose sometime. Um, and so, and when you want to push with a um, screwdriver in here to push it onto your hose, can uh, th that can be somewhat of a challenge. So this is just an old one I have sitting around, but I try to always use these right here. Now, uh, one of the things that you also want to figure out and have is adapters. So this type of adapter right here, this would be, uh, this is pipe right here, and this is uh, male for a garden hose. In particular, where that's useful is right here. So when I have my black pipe, this of course is the black pipe three-quarter inch run all over the farm. This would be a coupling. Um, I have a coupling over here, but this is how I couple from a three-quarter inch to pipe thread. So what I can do is I can take this and now I can come right on here and now I can come straight on to um, with, with a garden hose and on like a typical garden hose would be. Um, because keep in mind on a garden hose, you're going to have a male end and a female end. The female end always goes to the hydrant um, and then the male end come here. So if you have a male end here, now you've got a problem. So here's that's where this fitting can come into play. So here I can do that. And now I can bring a typical garden hose in and now I can screw right on to here. So now I can match up to a typical garden hose. I would actually use this because sometimes 
I create whips or um, or you're making do, you know, when you when you need to get parts. So I always recommend having they can be able to go both ways. Uh, so that's pretty important there. And I can get all these fittings that I like Menards in the plumbing section. Okay, so I will use plastic if it's good and uh, sturdy, but not when I'm gonna use right away. Of course, three quarter inch couplings, barbs uh, for couplings, that works fine. Here are the plastic kind. Um, these will work, I've had them break in half here. When it comes to like what I showed you over here with this metal fitting, right through this, this uh, uh, steel one, what happens on the plastic is the threads will over will will roll roll over and you will not be able to tighten up um, and they will leak. And so this is actually a failed part. I kept it just because in, in the back in case I needed a backup, um, but I will throw it away eventually. But I can tell you that it does not work very well. Um, I do use three quarter inch ball valve, and here's a ball valve right here. So nice, good, solid, a three quarter inch ball valve. So this is your garden hose end right here. And here would be your three quarter inch barb right here. And uh, so you can on and off there, no problems. Um, coming back to how to affix on the garden hose or on, on the line. You'll find these pieces at your local stores. Um, they do work. Um, I don't consider them to be farm quality. The problem I had with this one in particular was that this uh, bolt is so thin that I can get it to strip out. Uh, so it's useless if I'm trying to really tighten down and avoid leaks, uh, it'll strip out. Uh, same with this one here. And these, it's just hard to kind of get everything lined up right. So I always try to use a good uh, uh, hose clamp. Um, I always find a size of a half inch to inch and sixteenth to be the best type of stainless steel hose clamp that I can get. And I try to keep a handy supply of them. That generally um, uh, makes most of my needs. Now, let me talk about hose clamps for a second. So you can see I put two hose clamps on here. Um, you can do one, you're gonna have more of a chance of leaks, but you wanna do two. Now, there's a certain thing here that I uh, have found out the hard way is the orientation of these. And by the way, you wanna have them 180 off of each other. That way they, you have a good clamping on all sides of the, of the line. Is when you're holding it like this, you can see that this hose clamp, if it is long, it'll come up and touch your hand. And when you go like this, or go, to, go ahead and open it, you will slice your knuckle. Um, if you're like me and prone to slicing knuckles, that's not a good thing. So what you want to do is have these to be uh, one up and one bottom. That way, at least you're on top and you don't have to quickly slice your knuckle against the post plant end. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, let's talk about uh, the tools I use. Now, these tools I keep on my mule, which is our, key, our, our mule that we use. Um, this is how if I if I come upon a, um, a break in the line and I need to um, um, break it in half, this is a PEX tube. Uh, we put PEX in our house, and so I had this knight or the scissors. Works really great. I just keep it on a regular 516 driver uh, to get for my hose clamps, and then um, two open and or two um, adjustable wrenches. I prefer with the with the break not the straight like this right here because you can get more grip onto your fittings. It also doesn't. It also tends to treat the head end of your fittings uh, better. They don't get all um, uh, rolled over and they last longer. Now I know that the, the one of the major things, big things about what we're talking about here is what is this valve that we're talking about. So this really helped us um, be able to move and handle water very well. There are a couple different ways of working with, with this. Now, one thing is I use garden hose connections. Uh, you will find you can use quick disconnects and that is fine. Um, we, I chose not to, um, probably because of cost. And the other reason why is you can use a hose, uh, like a quick disconnect type fitting, if you're moving every day or moving a lot. Uh, and we might move, um, you know, I, I know uh, once every four weeks we'll move a tank around because we create a lot of alleyways within our paddocks to bring cattle to the water. Uh, so we, we don't move the water, we will create alleyways. If you move your water a lot, then you might want to think about using quick disconnects. Uh, they are on the web, I looked them up. I don't remember the, the locations anymore, but just you can look up the, those type of quick disconnects. And that's a, that's a pretty good way to, to do this. I use, but I use hose ends right here. So when I talk about this valve, now this is, first of all, this is my whip. I make them different lengths um, and uh, made a couple of them. Uh, but the reason why I, I wanted to have a whip was because the valve that we use is a half inch valve. And so you get your hose that comes into here and 
So here's the end of your garden hose. And of course, I make up this garden hose, um, and, and uh, it's from a from a farm and ranch hose that I that I've had torn up. So what happens here, or what what sits here, is first you have this valve. So you got your float right here. This comes in, and this is this is half inch, and then it comes uh, through this piece of two piece angle iron that I made, and then this is the the, the bulkhead nut that tightens that up, and then it comes comes out to half inch male. Then from the same store, which I actually had to buy this from a, a plumbing store, Menards and Lowe's don't carry this type of product. I actually had to go to, um, to a plumbing store in Dubuque to get this. I bought this fitting that threaded over this half inch, and then what it did, it took me to three quarter inch uh, garden hose. So this is the actual uh, valve that I will then put into a tank. And when I mentioned about having a rock, what I'll do is I'll set a rock right here in the tank because this float, when it starts to open and close in the pressure, it will actually start to raise things up and it will um, overflow the tank. So I always put a rock on here to kind of help hold it down. Plus it helps the, uh, you know, there's a cattle start nud nudging in there. And, and, no and this, uh, this of course comes out of the tank, comes onto the ground and hooks up to my connection or to my, to my main line. What I tried to do is you know, lay it on the side of the tank where they're not going to be. You know, and the one I showed you, uh, cows are over here, the steers over here, I can come off the side and my tank is fine. Uh, you could also drill a hole into that tank if you want to put a bulkhead fitting in there. Uh, that would be one idea to do. And, and then that way, then the hose would not be outside of the tank and you couldn't be, um, you know, grabbed by a foot or by a hook or something like that. Uh, I just haven't done that. Uh, but if I really needed to, you could do that. Uh, so. Uh, this is our valve set up here, and I've showed you uh, the type of fittings that we use. Uh, I'd like to go ahead and open up for any questions. Greg, if there's some. Perfect. We got about four minutes left. Uh, Tammy had asked about the black, how durable the black plastic um, piping is. Like, for example, could you are you able to drive over that through pathways, or is that something you have to be cautious of? Um, you know, you can drive over it. I do not. Um, I, I don't want to drive over it. If I have to drive over it, what I would do is dig a small trench, um, get a piece of PVC, like a three, uh, one inch PVC pipe, lay that in the trench, run this through, and then let that PVC pipe be used as a culvert. Um, I actually do that when I drive, uh, given my hydrant and where its relation to the barn and where I have a, a, some, a set of connections. Um, I'll just drive over a three quarter inch PVC or one inch PVC pipe. That generally can take a tractor driver and over it, uh, but I would not want to drive over that pipe consistently. Uh, it, it just, what happens is it'll flatten and it'll crease on the sides and then and, um, uh, you know, then of course it starts to break from there. The other thing, uh, so like what we did in the springtime is we had to pull it down because I was dragging logs through the through the uh, pasture in the wintertime. And so we pulled that that hose out and pulled it down. I mean, it will tend to kink a little bit too. So you, you have to be really careful uh, when you actually want to roll it or pull it away. Make sure you don't kink that hose. Uh, so it, it is, it's not meant for driving over a lot of, a lot of consistent moving. Uh, that's what garden hose is for. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Levi uh, made a comment that he's seen people take a chunk of steel pipe and lay that over and use that to drive over, yep. kind of protect yep. that. So, yep. yeah, I, yeah, kind that, of creating a culvert. You could put a piece of angle, angle iron over it if you, you know, a three inch piece of angle, angle iron, something like that would be perfect, you know, something like that. So yeah, yeah. that works. Fantastic. Question, how, when you're running multiple waters, do you have to worry about pressure or, is, or do you have a way of regulating that pressure? Um, I do not regulate my pressure. My pressure is regulated by my well pump. Um, and so it's running about between 40 and 60 PSI. Um, and so I don't have much concerns about, uh, about the pressure. The valve doesn't care. The hoses are rated to 100 PSI. So uh, no, I, I don't uh, um, regulate my pressure at all, except through the valve, through the, uh, the valve, uh, the pump, okay. the, the well pump. Fantastic. Um, I think I have one more here. Oh, and uh, were the, when you were doing the equip project, were there any um, any things that kind of jumped out to you that you hadn't thought of before working on that project, or you had to tweak because of working with the NRCS, or were you able to fulfill your needs? Um, so the question was, help me because the equip. So we used the equip to put this in, and, um, and so the question was. A what again? What was the question? Was there anything that um, you might have had to tweak that you weren't able to do because of the the equip um, requirements? Um, 
You, you know, I don't look at to think about that. I don't really think so. Uh, I mean, if I had to, not, not that we tweaked while we were actually doing it, because uh, Lori was really very good about helping us work through everything. Um, I think it comes back to the quality of the person that you're working with uh, with NRCS. Um, I, I, Lori's very sharp, and um, you know, and I don't, and I guess you could say maybe water system probably. I hope it's not. It, 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 it's just so you know what you're doing. Uh, but we didn't have to go back through and um, change anything. If I had to do it again, I would um, buy another valve setup or another true valve setup, and I would um, not be afraid to buy additional piping because um, you know you always uh, once you get it done, you know then you say, well, I wish I could have had more pipes. So maybe maybe I am answering a question in, inver inadvertently there. But uh, if I had to go back and do it again, that's what I would do. But we didn't have to change anything during the equip process. Uh, but Lori worked with me very closely on that. So I, I wouldn't Fantastic. have feared going back and asking anything. Great. That's great to hear. And one last question here from Mel. Uh, how do you water in the winter? So um, actually, as I was watching the video, I thought I never talked about water uh, when, uh, watering in the winter. So thanks for bringing it up, Al. Appreciate that. That's good. Uh, so, you know, we uh, we have a summer routine and a winter routine. In my winter routine, my cows go back to a to a sack pasture is what I call it, where I do a lot of bale grazing all winter. Uh, we'll, we'll position the bales at some ground that we have that uh, we want to kind of re rehabilitate by adding compost to the, to the top. So what we do is I, I have a central watering point in my barn that's heated. And so I route that all my my steers are in a sack pasture where they're on uh, a winter ration that works through our shop, through our barn, and the cows can come up to that also. So my wintering is done through all uh, all through one water that's in the barn that's the heated water. Uh, we don't have the capacity to winter to water outside. Um, you know, Jackson County, you don't get you don't dig very deep here uh, without having to spend a lot of money, jackhammer and backhoes. Um, you know, and so you, I, I try not to do much of that because I just can't recoup that investment of putting a watering point out away and getting that far in the ground to use like a ground type system. Fantastic. Well, thank you again, Bill. This has been really interesting, and you've done such a great job with your watering system. And it's great to see the things that worked and uh, kind of weed out some of the, the things that didn't work before others try their own project. So we appreciate you for your time. And uh, I wanted to remind everyone that we have part two of this series. This is a three part series where Susan Young will show us how she's raised uh, layer hens on her pasture uh, through her rotation. Um, and also wanted to invite everyone to take a few minutes to complete the evaluation. The link is in the comments. Um, and for participating, you'll be entered to win a PFI water bottle. And more importantly, we will receive your feedback. So again, thank you. And uh, thank you, Stacy, for holding the camera and um, working behind the scenes on your end. So thank you again, Bill. Yep. Yep. Thank you much. We appreciate the opportunity. All right. Everyone enjoy your day. Thank you. Bye-bye.